The Rejection of the King is the series that we have been looking at. And welcome to today's Adults on This Call. We started this series a couple of weeks ago, and today we'll be talking about part three. The title, the topic for our Adults on This Call class today is The Rejection of the King, part three. And our text is taken from the book of Matthew, chapter 12, verse 22 to 20 to 37. Matthew chapter 12, verse 22 to 37. Our central truth, however, is a man without Christ is blind, deaf, and mute to the things of God. A man without Christ is blind, deaf, and mute to the things of God. In case you're wondering, this is the Sunday school. This is the adult Sunday school class. And my name is Demitope David. I want to thank all my viewers who have been subscribed, who have, who have actually subscribed to the YouTube channel. And I want to thank all my Facebook followers and Facebook fans. You guys are amazing. One thing though, it's important that you actually do share this video with your friends and family. A Sunday school is an opportunity to learn, is an opportunity to flip through the pages of the scripture and have a better understanding. It's, this is a space where we are educating ourselves and by the grace of God and through the impact and the burden of the Holy Spirit, we are growing in the things of God and in the knowledge of God. And you know, at Sunday school, we like to be very, very practical, practical in the things that we have learned or in the things that God is sharing with us and opening our eyes to. And for all my fans, all my followers, but on Facebook and on YouTube, especially this is especially for my Facebook people. Please, I need you to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Can we all do that? Subscribe to the YouTube channel, help drive this traffic and as well share this. See, the most important thing is for you to share actually. And I want to thank those who have been sharing. God bless you so much. And I know you know the importance of sharing the good news of God, the 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 good news of this gospel is so that every other person that doesn't perhaps know Christ or are looking to grow themselves um, in, in spiritual things or spiritual, educating themselves spiritually, this is a space where they can do that. And thank you so much for believing. Thank you for your emails and your calls. I do appreciate it. You guys are amazing. And it's giving me, it's keeping me going. Thank you so much. So going back to our lesson today and um, my memory verse is taken from the book of matthew chapter 12 verse 32 do not forget to click the subscribe button or follow if you're watching on facebook so the memory verse today is taken from the book of matthew chapter 12 verse 32 and it says and whosoever speaketh a word against the son of man it shall be forgiven him but whosoever speaketh against the holy ghost it shall not be forgiven him neither in this world neither in the world to come again we are talking about the rejection of the king part three in our class today we have three outline the first one is jesus proved his messianic a uh, messianic power the second is jesus answered the accusers and the third is Jesus warned the accusers. Uh, going into just the introductory aspect of the lesson, the event in the scripture or in our text today revealed the heart of the Pharisees in their opposition and rebellion against the power of the Messiah. Christ was scorned and diabolically attacked. He was not only blasphemed, accused, but was also charged with been possessed of the devil. His responses to those opposition and accusation are lessons for us as Christians, especially leaders in his kingdom assignment. This lesson is divided into three parts, which I already mentioned earlier. And we'll be looking at our text. Again, our text will be reading from our text, which is taken from the book of Matthew chapter 12, verse 22 to 20 to 37. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And it says, And all the multitudes were amazed and said, Could this be the son of David? Now when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow does not cast out demons except by Beelzebub, the ruler of the 
demons. But Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. And every city or house divided against itself will not stand. If Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then will the kingdom stand? And if I cast out demons by Beelzebub, why, by whom do you, do your sons cast them out? Therefore they shall, therefore they shall be your judges. But if I cast out demons by the spirit of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. Or how can one enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first bind the strong man and then he, and, and then he plunders his house. He who is not with me is against me and he who does not gather with me scatters abroad. Therefore I say to you, Every sin of blasphemy will be forgiven men, but the blasphemy against the spirit will not be forgiven men. Anyone who speaks a word against the son of man, it will be forgiven him. But whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit, it will not be forgiven him either in this age or in the age to come. Either make the tree good and its fruit good or make the tree bad and its fruit bad for it, it for a tree is known by its fruit broods of viper how can you being evil speak good things for out of the abundance of their heart the mouth speak a good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth things and an evil man out of the evil treasures bring forth evil things but i say to you that Every idle word men may speak, they will give account of it in the day of judgment. For by the words you, for by your words you will be justified, or by your words you will be condemned. So we're going to look at the first outline, which is Jesus proved his messianic power, according to Matthew chapter twelve, verse twenty-two to twenty-four. The text that we have just written, especially in, the, in, in Matthew as, um, as one of the contributors to the scripture, narrates here two different reactions to Jesus' complete um, healing, com complete healing of, the de of a demon-possessed man who was blind and mute, which is, when I, when I mean mute, I mean dumb, as a demonstration of his power over demons. The multitudes were amazed, wondering if Jesus might be the son of David, the long-expected Messiah. Matthew chapter 9 verse 27, you know, um, it says, When Jesus departed from there, two blind men followed him, crying out, crying out and saying, Son of David, have mercy on us. And Matthew chapter 21 verse 9 says, Then the multitude who went before and those who followed cried out saying hosanna to the son of david blessed is he who come who comes in the name of the lord hosanna in the highest here jesus was constantly followed it was followed into the mountain the only time jesus had time away from the people was when he was when he goes um, a way to pray and obviously he does also have his multi his, his disciples um that goes with him to pray you know here um the pharisees were very judgmental declaring that jesus was a servant of belzebub belzebub is known as the ruler of darkness is run as as the head of um of demons if we look at if you look at the history of the scripture you would know that Beelzebub is attached to the gods in Baal is one of the um known gods amongst the Canaanite in Baal and you know the 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 the, the, the commandment of God told for us is that we should not bow down to any other 
aside from him. Here, the Pharisees or the scribes were challenging Jesus and the authority that he, that, 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 that he puts out there, the authority that stamps, that stamps his identity as the son of God. And Jesus went on further to let them know that, listen, a house divided against itself cannot stand. How can somebody who is a servant of the devil cast out another devil? It's not possible. It's absolutely not possible. It's not even right. So here Jesus was able to, the things that Jesus did gave a credence to his being, to his authority and his, 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 his position as the son of God. But yet the, 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 the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the scribes, the leaders of the time, the leaders and the interpreters of law were against him. These are people who are constantly reading the reading the reason who, who read the scripture, who read the laws of Moses, who read the letters of the prophets. The imagine prophet Isaiah talking about um and Jesus, how he's going to come, the things that he's going to do. These are people who read on almost on daily basis, who thought, who taught the law. But when the manifestation of the prophecy of this, they have been reading about, came about, they refused to accept Jesus. They refused to accept his authority. They refused to accept him. They continually hardened their heart. So let's just keep progressing to our next, um, our next um, outline, which is Jesus answered the accusers according to Matthew chapter 12, verse 25 to 30. You know, Jesus responded to the Pharisees' thoughts, not just what they said, not their words. In Matthew chapter 9, verse 4, as well as John chapter 2, verse 25, you can read that in your, in your own spare time. He knew what was in man. He, he told them how absurd it was for them to believe that Satan will attack and defeat and defeat his own demonic forces. If that were to happen, then Satan will be destroying his own kingdom. He even asked them the power of their own exorcist used to cast out demons. They were silent on his question because it would go to affirm Jesus' authority over demons. Jesus' father told them that he had already bound Satan and so was now plundering his goods by freeing bound, um, by freeing people bound by, by, by demons. Satan is already bound and the oppression of the, of the enemy is so rampant even amongst, you know, both believers and unbelievers. And this is what Jesus has, has come to do. He has brought liberty liberty from the bondage of sickness and the attacks of 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 of, of demonic forces and the example that jesus is jesus has done as carried out here is to affirm his authority and to plunder and to bring away from darkness that is what the gospel is about the gospel is about bringing light letting the light of god shine shine in the darkness and bringing freedom to those that are bound, bringing freedom to those that are bound, that are in a form of, 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 of bondage, you know, bondage, even in our modern times or in our days can be a lot of things. Poverty is a bondage, struggle, sickness. You know, there are some things that are, that the enemy is just pushing into our society. And this is what Jesus is here to do is here to set people free. Is here to he says is is here to give people a lighter a lighter yoke and take the burden, the burden of fear, the burden of shame, the burden of disappointment, the burden of failure, the burden of 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 of, of attacks, demonic attacks. This is what Jesus came to do and practically is also doing it right now. I don't know what it is that you're going through, 
but just by the example that Jesus is the, has the authority over, over everything. Please do not harden your heart and surrender is able to lift that burden, is able to help you. And these actions of Christ proves the comprehensive superiority and authority of Jesus over Satan. You know, Jesus concluded by challenging them that they were not neutral, they, they, there was no neutral ground as far as he, Jesus, was concerned. The truth is you are either for him or you are against him. Finally, Jesus deals with this question of unpardonable sin in verse 33 and to 32 in our text. In the narrative today, we read how the miracle wrought by Jesus was attributed to Satan by the Pharisees. This is stated as one sin that will not be forgotten, that will not be forgiven at all. So you can look at Mark chapter chapter 3 verse 28 and to 30 and Luke chapter 12 verse 10. It is stated um, it is stated this this way not because God's grace changes um, towards such sinners and blasphemers who attributes the work of the Holy Spirit to Satan but because these sinners harden their hearts so that the operations of grace upon their lives cannot be received. This is why Jesus warned the scribes and Pharisees that they were dangerously near these conditions. It is important that we know our place and the place of God in our lives. The Bible says that, you know, the Bible, the Bible emphasizes that a, a good tree always bears good fruit. And as children of God, we have to bear good fruits and live by the standards uh, that is available through us through the through the eyes and the lens of the scripture and this is leading us to the third outline which is jesus warns the accusers in matthew chapter 12 verse 33 to 34 matthew chapter 12 verse 33 to 30, 37 it says therefore i say to you every sin of blasphemy will be forgiven men but the blasphemy against the spirit will not be forgiven men Anyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man, it will be forgiving him. But whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit, it will not be forgiven him, either in this age or in the age to come. Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or, or else make the tree bad and its fruit bad. For a, for a tree is known by its fruit. Brood of vipers. Or oh, how can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Um, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good, good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasures um, bring forth evil things. But I say to you that for every idle word men speak, they will give account of it in the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified and by your words you will be condemned. Words are extremely important. And if you're a leader or God is calling you to a place of responsibility, it's important to form a habit of, 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 of guiding and guarding your words. By your words, Jesus said that to you, you will be condemned. And by your word you will be saved. You will be justified. The word, words are extremely important. They play a major role in determining a man's destiny. That is why, you know, even in this time, they always say that you have to confess the positive. You have to confess the good things. If you desire something, you have to confess it. Because with God, there is nothing that goes to waste. Your words does not go to waste. You will definitely give account for every idle work word that you speak can you just imagine that if you're going to give account for every single word that comes out of your mouth the words play a major role in determining a man's destiny the spoken word reflects the nation the nature of the heart the sort of things that come out of your mouth reflect the the posture 
and the nature of your heart out of the abundance the bible says out of the abundance of your of your heart the mouth speaks you definitely know a good person and a bad person just even just by communicating with them and you know understanding what is going through their mi- mind by the things that they speak what a tree produces as fruit is from the inside so a bad tree will never produce good fruit the already corrupted heart of the pharisees cannot be expected to speak good things even when it's so it is so manifestly manif- manifestly visible to all when we must therefore watch our, our words because words expose the heart words must be accounted for in the day of judgment words determines a person's identity a man is judged to be guilty or not guilty based on the testimony on the testimony that is gave, that, that he gives that is by his own words you would be condemned or saved or justified in conclusion to our text our lesson today you know from from the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks what we what we are within <clears throat> our heart determines our what we have within our heart determines our behavior therefore what a man need is not reformation reforming behavior or changing nature or society but what a man need is transformation the transformation of of the heart human nature cannot be made good it has to be transformed that is regenerated the word the answer to the world's problem is not political is not legal is not religious it is spiritual it's a change a spiritual change of the positions of a man's heart and um before we come to a conclusion of our lesson one of the questions that we have to answer is according to this lesson what does it mean to sin against the holy spirit what does it really mean what does it mean to sin against the holy spirit and that is that one that is the one sin that would not be forgiven can you just imagine that you know the sin against the, the holy spirit is actually an eternal sin an unforgivable sin unpardonable it is called the ultimate sin which is not forgivable which which cannot be forgiven by 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 god one external or on on it, it is just an external or unforgivable sin which is a blasphemy against the holy spirit is also known as the sin <clears throat> as the sin unto death that's your like that that's the answer to the unforgivable sin is when you attribute the work of god to satan a person can actually commit one sin in multiple ways you know it's not just attributing and saying oh it is not you know let me not say say what i have to say but it's basically attributing the work of god and saying that is satan that does it you can't do that you just can't do that you can't give god's glory the bible says that god said he will not share his glory with any man if you know the position of the holy spirit the holy spirit is god you blaspheming against god is unforgivable the holy spirit is the spirit of the living god who carries out the work of god even here on earth the healing the protection the the provision the guidance the the spiritual gift that we exercise um, that people see the gift of prophecy gift of healing gift of teaching um the gift of service all of these are the gift the work of the holy spirit and when the lord releases grace to be able to able to perform in that position you, and you're doing it through the help of the holy spirit with the influence of the holy spirit you cannot attribute the things that god has done the holy spirit has done you cannot attribute it to devil to the say to, to satan that is completely wrong and you know what 
a person can actually commit one sin in multiple ways. Let's take, for instance, an example is stealing. You know, stealing somebody's car, stealing their money, stealing their 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 their, their job, stealing and stealing um somebody's possession or their worth. It's still stealing, stealing. But here is the ways where you can actually commit that one sin in multiple ways. So if we look at yes, how the scripture puts the ultimate sin, the sin of sin, the, the sin against the Holy Spirit has been unforgiven. It, it, it should give us a, a sound of warning to actually understand that actually this is not a joke. We cannot attribute the work of God, the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives and attribute it to the enemy, to the devil, to, 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 to Satan. But it's sad, you know, it's sad to read in several places in the scripture how the scribes and the leaders of, of, of the law constantly reject and, at, at, and attack our Lord Jesus Christ. It's, it's, they, 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 they did that with so much hardened heart, despite the, 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 the making and the signs and wonders that Jesus performed. When he healed the demon-possessed man, in 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 the in our pre in our passage you know it is essential to say that people want proof you want proof that i am the messiah yes healing somebody and imagine restoring a withered hand to a normal hand that's a miracle it's not it's 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 amazing the fact that he he, he raised the dead an example is lazarus that is a miracle. That is him saying that he has authority. Imagine witnessing this um, immense miracle in the days of Jesus. And yet you're still asking for a proof and asking if he's, if he's the Messiah. You know, Jesus said, okay, you want proof that I am the Messiah? He fed 5,000. He healed the people. He said, yes, that's your proof. He raised the dead. He delivered people of 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 of, of that are possessed of demons, that's the proof. Now, it is your choice. You have to make a choice. Will you follow Jesus or will you reject Jesus? Because even in our time today, Jesus still is still Lord. It is he's Lord over all. But here is the opportunity to not harden your heart. Yes, you might say, oh, I'm a Christian. I know the scripture and all of that. But you really have to be genuine, genuinely born again. You really need to surrender. There is a there is a head understanding is different from the spiritual experience of submitting and asking the Lord Jesus to come into your life. And I want to extend that invitation to you today. I want to I want I want you I want to tell you not to harden your heart. The Bible says in, in Revel Revelations chapter three it says, Behold, I stand at the door. And at the door, what door? The door of your heart. And I am knocking. Jesus is knocking at the door of your heart. The truth is, is able to deliver you. He's able to heal you. He's able to restore you. He's able to buy you that house. He's able to, he's able to, 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 to give your business the boost. He's able to heal you of that mental state. He's able to build you up. He's able to... It means, you know, the Bible says that whosoever the son sets free, he is free indeed. Like, yes, there's so many other factors in our world, but I'm telling you the freedom that Jesus brings. It's the freedom that cannot be purchased or, or bought with money. He said he's knocking at the door of your heart. Whoever opens the door unto me, I will come in to him. I will, I will dine with him. I would live with him. I would sort him out. He said he would take up his your burden. He said he would give us. He would, he would take. He would take away our burden. I want you to cast that burden upon him because he cares for you. And at this point, I want to invite you to invite Jesus into your life as the Lord, as your Lord and personal Savior. And if you're taking that decision right now, I just want you to repeat after me and just say this quick word of prayer and say, Lord Jesus, I have heard your word today and I'm not hurting my heart anymore. 
I want you to come into my life. I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you came to this world. You died for me to set me free, to take away all this burden that, that, I, that, that, I'm, that, is, that is trying to drown me. I surrender my life to you and I confess that you are Lord over my life. Take your place, Holy Spirit. I ask you to come. Forgive all my sins and cleanse me, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. As from today, I declare you Lord over my life and I'm submitting to your will and purpose for me. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. Amen. And if you've said that word of prayer today, I'd like you to send me a message. I would like to connect with you and pray with you. And peradventure, you obviously you're living far away from me. I would like to encourage you to attend a Bible believing church where you can grow in, in, in where you can grow and fellowship with other saints. And I would also like to say a word of prayer. You can connect with me on WhatsApp. It's on Facebook as well. If you're watching on Facebook and if you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe. So before I go, I would like to leave this question for, for my viewers and my listeners. And it says, can a Christian sin against the Holy Spirit? If you agree, join in the conversation. If you do not agree, please explain as well. So, um, Share your thoughts about this. Can a Christian sin against the Holy Spirit? If yes, please explain. And if no, please explain. Drop me a comment. Drop me a direct message. Direct a DM or send me an email. Connect with me on WhatsApp. And as you do so, God bless you till I come your way next time. Have a wonderful day. My name is Demitopa David. Take care and have a wonderful week. Bye.